In this video, we're answering some of the messages and emails that we've been sent by you. So having read uh, your messages and your emails. One of the main areas that comes out, it's really getting started. That seems to be the sort of main area of interest and the main area that you would like us to, to share. And it's easy for us to forget some of those early steps and some of those early difficulties. And myself, I was very fortunate because when I, when I started out myself with those early stages, I was in and around the workshop here. So I had others who could guide me and could make that process of learning slightly easier. To help anyone who is very much in their first steps of learning wood carving, spoon carving or love spoon carving, I'm going to break this video down into four key sections. The first one is wood. And in that section, I'm actually going to say something slightly different to what I normally say in regard to woods. The second section is to do with tools. Now, basically, I'm going to be reinforcing what I normally say when it comes to tools. The third one then is to highlight some of the very basics of the methods that you use for carving. And the final one is to give a bit of attention to design because it's a key area for how you can make your work more unique and more personal to you. So that's what we're gonna get into is to focus on those four key areas for anyone who is in their very first stages of learning wood carving, spoon carving, or love spoon carving. So as I mentioned, our first key area is the wood itself. Now as I mentioned, I was very fortunate. I grew up around the workshop here. So I had access to wood that had been processed ready for the job. We mentioned that we use a lot of recycled wood, that sort of thing. But if you're starting out and you've got no background in wood carving or woodwork whatsoever, how do you go about getting wood? But not just how do you go about getting wood, how do you get wood that is suitable for learning and those very early stages of learning wood carving? Now, I would normally say that it's best to avoid buying woods online because it's often overpriced for what you're actually getting. And there are far cheaper ways to source your woods. However, in this case, where you're right at the very start, timbers like lime, which are easy carving wood, can be the difference between you progressing and continuing to carve and giving up altogether. So I think that it's reasonable to look at beginners wood carving wood because that has been cut and processed specifically for the job of learning wood carving. So it should be suitable for these early stages. It may be the case that somebody's given you wood and you're, you've got access to logs and things like that. Just try it if you want to, but be cautious with it because whilst wood may seem wood is wood, it's not the case. You have wood that has difficult grain. You have wood that has knots in it. You have wood that is unsuitable for wood carving. And that's another point then we would raise. When you are first learning to carve, try different timbers, 
find the one that suits you. So whilst we guide you towards lime, also known as basswoods, you as an individual may suit a timber like teak. At the mention of teak, a lot of people go, oh, it's very hard. It's actually the one that dad learned to carve with. And the reason for it, it's full of teak oil. So whilst it can dull the edges of your tools, it is soft to work because of the oil in the timber. So in summing up our first area for learning the very basics of wood carving, initially I would advise using a timber like basswood lime just to have a go at those basic processes. But if it doesn't suit you, try different timbers before you give up on it. Remember to consult advice. You've got wood carving clubs, you've got experts, you've got carpenters, joiners. They may be able to give you some valuable inputs. But ultimately, try different things and see what suits you on your journey to improving your wood carving best. The second key area that I've identified for those initial steps in learning wood carving are the tools. Now here at the Loveson Workshop, we've got access to quite a wide variety of hand gouges and hand tools, as well as having access to different mechanized tools. When you're first starting out, it just isn't necessary. Four or five different shaped gouges, maybe a coping saw, and some form of securing your work will be sufficient to get the job done. And it will allow you plenty of scope for learning the process of wood carving. Now I know that whittling is very popular and I'm not advising people not to do that. If that is your interest and the method that you wanna pursue, go for it. It's just that I would suggest that it is easier when learning wood carving to secure your work in some way, either using a vise or a clamp. That way you can get both hands on the tool that you're working with. It gives you more stability so that whatever you're working on doesn't move around as much and it gives you a lot more control over the tool that you're using. When it comes to the gouges themselves, you will see a lot of cheaper gouges, larger sets of gouges, and this can be really tempting because it's keeping your costs down. But what I would suggest is to buy four or five gouges of a reasonable quality, you will end up getting more use and they will be better suited to the job than buying lots and lots of cheaper ones that just don't do the job as well. Now we've done previous videos talking about the different gouges, different gouge makers, how you can source the uh, different tools. So check that one out because the tools can be a really important area that again can decide whether you are successful or not in your pursuit of learning how to wood carve. Another area that you often identify and question us about when it comes to the tools is sharpening. Sharpening is an essential skill to develop. But just like the process of learning to wood carve, it takes time to learn. There's loads of information out there. There's loads of different systems out there. We've done a few videos again ourselves showing you different methods of sharpening. Practice it, learn it, and develop those skills. However, there are other ways that you can get tools sharpened. Some of the companies that sell tools actually allow you to return the tools for sharpening. So if you're doing it as a weekend hobby, that can be the perfect solution to the problem of keeping your tools sharp. 
However, if you can learn the process of working with a simple slipstone or oil stone, it can allow you to keep your gouges and chisels well sharpened and well honed. And that is an important step in improving your wood carving, is having a suitable and sharp tool for the job. Now at this point, I just wanna pause and make a key point when it comes to learning carving. Now it's the same as any other skill that you learn. And in those initial stages, you've got a wealth of information, you've got so much to learn, and it's essential, you need to learn to enjoy that process. But equally, it's worth seeking out advice from others. Now there are all sorts of carving clubs, forums, there's a lot of information out there. And if you are stuck on something, there's people like myself doing YouTube channels. Reach out, email us, message us, put a comment on one of our videos. We're always willing to share our knowledge and our experience. And it doesn't matter how much wood carving you've done, you're always learning something new. Our methods, our process, it has changed massively over the years because we're always learning and we're always changing and we're always developing. So when you start out, never be afraid to ask questions of others. There's always somebody willing to give you an answer and hopefully send you in the right direction. The third key area when first starting to wood carve is the actual methods themselves. Now the other areas, the other three areas, the tools, the wood and the design, they are all to support this ultimately essential process of actually getting hold of the wood and having a go at wood carving. And this is ultimately the crux of whether you're gonna succeed and continue to develop your skills or not, is learning and developing your skills to wood carve. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some wood in the vise now, and I am gonna demonstrate some of the basic processes and methods that we use to do our wood carving. So, just to emphasize the point of how to carve wood, there is what we'd call a critical point where the grain and the fibers, they're running in the one direction and then at the critical point, they start to run in the opposite direction. So if I carve up this way here, we are working with the grain and we haven't reached that critical point. Now, if I come here, I am now over that critical point and I'm now getting resistance to the woods. If I continue to push, it will cut a big splinter out of there. And it will, if we do it along this edge as well, you will get a jagged finish. I get there and I'm having too much resistance. I can't go beyond that point without splitting the wood. So you carve in the direction that the grain is running, in the direction that those fibers are running, like so. And then to carve in the opposite direction, you have to turn the wood around in the vise, or if you're standing, you can go around the other side of the project that you're working on, and you then go the other side of the critical point, which lands roughly in the middle there, and you carve back in the other direction. The final key area identified is design. Now, when you're starting out, there's so much out there in terms of different designs. 
that it's a bit of a minefield. And what I always try to encourage is to have a go at your own designs. The reason for that is that it makes it more personal to you and it makes it more meaningful. Additionally, then, you can develop designs that suit your style and it also improves your eye as you design. And that then can translate over into your work with the words. To develop your designs as your eye is developing, that will help you improve your eye for wood carving. So that is why I encourage you, when you first start out, to have a go at your own designs. It makes it more interesting, but it also helps you to develop your overall ability. It's time for us to make our love spoon. Now, as you can see, I've designed a very simple design using the method I usually use of folding the page over like so to get it nice and symmetrical. We're going to use that then to mark around to give us guidelines because guidelines do exactly what they say. They give us a basic guide to work from. I selected a piece of mahogany that I'm going to work in. This is an easy carving piece of mahogany. Generally speaking, I'd advise you to start with the lime basswood because usually it is easy carving. Mahogany, this is an easy piece to work with. Not all pieces of mahogany are the same. Some are easy, some are more difficult. So what I'm going to demonstrate then, uh, we're going to go across into a little bit of a time lapse and I'm going to draw that design onto the wood itself. I'm then going to use a coping saw to do some of the cutting out. The reason for that then, we have access to a scroll saw, but it's likely that when you're starting out, you haven't got access to a, a, a scroll saw. So uh, a coping saw can be picked up relatively cheaply. Um, and I always advise to keep your costs down when you first start. And then I'm going to demonstrate the skills and explain the skills of carving our bowl, doing the carving of the heart, um, and then also demonstrate how you can finish your spoon, your love spoon, or whatever wood carving you happen to be doing. What I'm going to demonstrate for you now is a simple method for cutting out the spoon itself. Now, we marked that on there, so we've got our uh, lines on there, marking it out, our guidelines. And we're going to use those as a rough guide. I'm also going to demonstrate some simple carving techniques, a simple method that we use for carving the bowl. Also then going to show you how we do stop cuts and just cutting down into our heart shape to give the spoon a little bit of depth. And all of these then, they're all the skills that you need to work on and to develop as you improve your wood carving. And it's using the coping saw. There's two reasons that I've chosen that as the, the methods to demonstrate for you. Firstly, it's a relatively inexpensive method to use. And secondly, because it's a hand tool, it helps in that process of, of getting used to the wood of using your hands to work with if you haven't got a background in that. Dad's just walked past and he's he's pointed out to me that um, I got the blade in backwards. Now this is interesting because whilst that is technically correct, which you were pointing out, um, I actually prefer it. So um, whilst I'm cutting backwards, I find that it actually cuts better. And this is something you pointed out that a lot of people... It's a debate. Right, there we are. So it's, it's open to debate then. When you first start, you can have a lot of advice. And sometimes people can say, well, I do it this way. And it's as if that is the only method to do it. But what you've got to do is to try and find your own, your own method. We're just starting that cut. What we're going to do now, we're going to go across into the time lapse and you'll be able to see us cutting out our basic spoon shape.
that we've got our very rough outline shape of our spoon cut out using our coping saw, the next thing we need to know how to do is to put a bowl on our spoon. So what we do for that, we put a center line across the middle there, and then we mark out a rough bowl shape. Again, we're giving ourselves a guideline. Now this is the method that I use. And one thing I'd like to emphasize again, just because I use guidelines doesn't mean you need to use them. They're just useful. So we can use them as a rough guide just to help us out. If you don't want to use them, don't worry about it. Don't use them. But for anybody who's starting right at the beginning, they can be useful. Other things you need to know then when you come to uh, do a bowl, and we've done videos specifically talking about carving the bowl out, uh, you mark your spoon with a vertical grain, especially if you're starting out because it's it's stronger, it's not fragile here so it can't snap as easily, um, and it's, it's also easier to carve because you're working constantly with the grain. So that's something that's important to know when you start carving. The grain is running in this direction. So you can see the lines of the wood, they're running in that vertical direction. And that's the way that you want to be carving. So again, we're going to go across into the time lapse and I'm just going to demonstrate how you can carve out a simple bowl. The next couple of stages are to drill our pilot hole through there, ready for using the coping saw again, just to cut that little gap out that can be used later on to hang our love spoon. We're then gonna go on to shaping all of this. So where we cut round the outside, we've got quite a, a rough finish. So we're gonna show you there are two methods that you can use for tidying that up. You can use sandpapers, glass papers, just to give it a smooth finish. But you can also use the hand tools and the hand gouges to shape that and to give that a nice finish as well. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna use the time lapse again and demonstrate how we can tidy up this love spoon, uh, moving it towards being ready for actually finishing. So at this stage, we've carved our love spoon, we've done our bowl, and we've shaped our basic spoon shape. So what we need to do from here is to hand sand our love spoon, 
and then hand finish our love spoon. So that's what we're gonna to demonstrate to you now. We're gonna go across into a time lapse again and show you how we hand finish our love spoons. Um, one thing worth noting, with all of this, take, take your time. There's no rush to do this. Um, all the time that you are doing this process, you are learning and, and it's that spending that time with the wood, with the tools, take your time and you will learn the processes and improve your skills and be able then to carve your spoons, love spoons or develop your wood carving. So there you have it. That is a very simple love spoon to get started. Um, it's a lovely process. So for anybody who hasn't had a go at carving a love spoon, a spoon, or doing any wood carving before, have a go. It's great fun, and you may surprise yourself with what you are able to make. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you know when we upload another video. And as we always say, thank you again for watching.